Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming with another episode of Stellaris Console Edition, the redo. Alrighty, we might eventually drop the redo. <laughs> when we left off, uh, we were trying to expand a little further north here. North, as much as north of Galactic Center can be. Um, trying to expand in this direction. And, uh, also finding out that Polysimus just does not really want to play nice and, uh, went through our borders to take a, uh, station for themselves and Antares, which is annoying and, uh, quite frankly, doesn't put me on their good side, but, uh, well, doesn't put them on my good side, I should say. But, uh, currently, so far, I'm still trying to improve relations. It's only a matter of time before I stop trying. And, uh, apparently, something is also harming relations on uh, us, for some reason, from their end. I don't know what. Huh. At this point, I don't really need to keep them happy, per se. So... I guess I can start making moves against the shenanigans they're pulling. I guess. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I was looking at that a little bit <laughs> earlier. Okay, so... Um, well, with that little bit in mind, I guess I can pull the envoy talking with them out and put that envoy into the Galactic Community assignment, which would be good. Just to increase our, you know, diplomatic weight a little bit. And now we can uh, move forward. Science division reports a new breakthrough. That was quick. All right, hyperlane breach points. Nice. Give me just a moment. I have to clear my throat. Sorry about that. I have no idea where that sudden bout of coughing came from, but here we are. Anyway, we have completed hyperlane breach points, which is good. And we'll move on to the next tech that will be a good idea to go into, like shields. That'd be nice. That'd be a good idea. Something we should probably invest in. All right, and now we continue on. Anomaly found. Oh, okay, that was quicker than I could respond to it. Um, atmospheric object. Sensor echoes have indicated the presence of some kind of unidentified object deep within the atmosphere of this gas giant. Yeah, let's look into that. Why not? It's a good idea, I think. But where is it? Oh, it's right there. Okay. Well, that makes sense. All right. Doing... Science Division reports a new breakthrough. Oh, another one. Nice. Close that. Star holds. Nice. Perfect. As space traffic increases, larger and more defensible star bases are needed to maintain control over system space lanes. Which makes sense to me. Hmm. There's a lot of good stuff here. A lot of it. I'm almost done with exotic gas refining. So, might as well finish that off. It's literally a month away. I'll finish it within a second. Basically. Uh, the shattered remnants of a cruiser-sized starship can be detected in a decaying orbit deep inside the atmosphere of S... S Week 5. It appears to have ventured far into the gas giant's atmosphere, perhaps in a desperate attempt to escape a pursuer. 
only to be crushed by the atmospheric pressure. The vessel is too deep to be salvaged, but a structural scan of the wreckage has provided us with some interesting engineering data. Science Division reports that long, a yeah, new breakthrough. Remarkable vessel. I'll give it that. All right. And with that, exotic gas refining is done. Exotic gas can be produced artificially, but it is a difficult process that requires advanced refinery equipment. Well, now we have it. So, space torpedoes. Why not? These torpedoes are essentially very large, slow-moving missiles. They are equipped with more powerful warheads and shield modulators that let them slip unmolested through energy screens. Which are pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Go ahead and do that. Sounds good to me. And this is almost done System here. reconnaissance completed. Oh, good. I'm hitting a lot of buttons really quickly, so. <laughs> if you're wondering why I keep pausing it, it's because uh, instinctively, if a notification pops up, my brain goes, oh, pause it so we can actually understand what's going on. Because sometimes they will come at you really quickly. Um, Construction oh, complete. That one's actually closer. Um, I started to realize that maybe I should start closing off some of the, you know, possible points where people can circumvent my borders. And wormholes are definitely one of them where that can easily happen. So uh, I'm going to also start moving uh, the Empire's borders in directions of that just so we can close them off and there is no way they can do that that's what we're doing here anyway uh the joinum starbase has finished its construction oh yeah that's right the one i just started upgrading so that one was communications jammer um hmm 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 Sublight speed, minus 20, and combat disengagement chance, minus 20. That's actually going to be pretty good in that particular position. Should I need to be doing combat with the Polysimus Syndicate? Because that is the key choke point that I have if they try to get into my territory. Let's go with that. And also, if we're going to be doing that, might as well make a couple anchorages. Yeah. I'm not going to be throwing gun batteries on there when... Gun batteries or missile batteries, technically, I should say. If the majority of the combat's going to be done in space with the space fleet... Might as well have anchorages there, so that way I can increase how many ships I can have on the field. Which is good. Alright. Actually, now I think about it, I should start upgrading all my other star bases to the next uh, level, since I now have star holds. But it looks like we have something for Dawn Life. Ooh. They're running out of amenities. That's not good. Um, <laughs> do hollow theaters. That's a good idea. That would cure that problem. Construction complete. And then I can upgrade this to planetary administration. Nice. And looks like they're done with that. And we'll just move on to... Hmm. Move on to this one after they're done. Whoops. I hit the wrong button. Do the mining first. Then make that. There we go. 
Wrong button combination. Happens a lot. Anyway, since I know that's good, um, I should start doing the plan I had, which was upgrading these to star holds. All of them. Yep. I'm starting to wonder if I have enough. I do not have enough alloys. Hmm. Alright, um... I guess I can sell some excess minerals. I make a lot of them. I make a lot of food, too. Might as well sell that as well. And, yeah. That should be good. And sell some excess of that. Yeah, sure. Um... Uh, I forgot I had a monthly trade set up for that. Well, I'm going to have to down that a little bit. Just a little. Just a six. That's fine. That's fine. It's not like it's going to kill me. In the grand scheme of things. I do need to buy those alloys, though. I almost forgot about that. And do that. And we will get that upgraded. And we will call it good. All right. There. Perfect. Ha ha ha. We move forward. Huh. Following a long period of growing support for the Galactic Emancipation Network, the Spookslack Star Nation has finally embraced the faction, adopting their core values and policies. As a result of bringing this faction into their government, they have become more outwardly egalitarian. Well... Purple Rain. Images capturing Dermius's, Dermius 4's mesmerizing purple ra colored rain. Blah, blah, blah. I can talk, really, I can't. Taken by the ISS Renard's surface exploration probes, somehow find their way into the hands of the cultural elite on Felon Day. While the discovery is of no scientific value, the evocative imagery of the colorful precipitation the way to make it a mouthful of words uh, sparks a minor renaissance in the Felon art world, the positive effects of which shall be felt for years to come. Remarkable. Remarkable. Anyway, I was going to check contacts and see how they now react to me. Not good. They do System not like reconnaissance completed. my authority. Like at all. Oh no. Oh boy. They went egalitarian on me, which means they no longer like me. They were authoritarian before, weren't they? Yeah. Hmm. That is unfortunate. <sighs> that is unfortunate. Hmm. Don't think there's much else I can do about that. Honestly, I don't think there is. <sighs> and these were the ones up here, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. Well, they are now the most immediate threat. Enjoy. All right. Well, alrighty then. Fuckily duckily. Anomaly found. Yes. Let's look at that. Sensors are reporting a number of possible points of interest within the dense debris field surrounding Trijam 5. Okay. Let's look into it. System reconnaissance completed. Huh. 
Federation, huh? The galaxy is dark and full of terrors, Phelan. Join us in a Federation for mutual protection. Hmm. The Galactic Union. Members of this Federation are united and ready to cooperate to deal with whatever problems may arise. Diverse ethics impose a 50% smaller penalty to Federation cohesion. Sure! Federal Cooperation Treaty signed. I don't see why not. You are our buddies, after all. Very much our buddies. A new Federation. Let history record that on this day, the governments of the Yeon Alliance and the Empire of Felinae signed a Treaty of Federation. As founding members of the Federal Sovereign Nations, they will now face the future as firm allies. This new galactic union will serve as a shining example to the rest of the galaxy of all that can be accomplished by working together. A new era of interstellar diplomacy has begun. A great day. You're losing Federation XP. What the fuck does that even mean? What? Federation XP? Levels? What? This is new? Laws? Um, succession term. Currently, active law is 20 years. Okay, that's fine. And subjects join? I guess they can. Uh, saying no would probably piss off the Yon Alliance. Let's not do that. Equal. Every member has one vote. That is true currently. War declaration is okay. Requires the Federation to be level 2 for me to move it to centralization of low. Some laws are locked and require increasing the centralization to unlock them. Federation must first level up, which is a new concept to me, might I add, to gain access to a higher centralization. Be cautious, though. As the centralization is increased, the cohesion will suffer. Fair enough. And the fleet contribution. This federation has a minor collaborative military effort. Members transfer 10% of their naval capacity to the federation. Hmm. These laws determine how much naval capacity our members give up for the federation navy. succession type is either on rotation or for the strongest okay currently rotation says it is the rotated between em member empires whenever a term ends and that means it'll be our turn starting 20 years from now or it'll go to the strongest that means the president will be chosen from the most powerful empire depending on which succession power is chosen the, su the, the succession power laws will become available when this law is active gotcha okay well i can't do anything right now and what i can do will piss off our new ally <laughs> so let's not do that We are currently not the Federation president, so we cannot design the Federation ships. There are special fleets that are controlled by the Federation president. They are designed in the Federation ship designer and can use any technology available to any of the members of the Federation. The Federation fleets cost no upkeep, but cannot exceed, cannot exceed the Federation naval capacity. Okay. Alrighty. Their opinion is very high of us. And currently, they beat us in fleet numbers, but I beat them on tech by a significant portion. 
and they just slightly edge us out in the economy. Okay, cool. Assign envoy. Oh, I have to envoy in this too. Oh, joy. That's going to be why the XP is going down. All right. Um, hmm. Alrighty. Well, I guess I'm going to have to pull one of them out of here. I guess we'll go with Prothamish. Pull them out of that. And put the envoy into the Federation. So we have contributors for the envoys of both them and us. At least have one. Maybe it'll help? A <laughs> little. Very little. <laughs> but hey, we're trying. We're trying and that's the important part. Alright, that's being taken care of right now. This one's done. Offer associate status to who? Associate status to the United Nations of Earth. abso fucking lootly. Let's do it. It is done. We are losing Federation XP. This is fine. I do not know how that works. System reconnaissance Find out completed. Eventually. Oh. 42 years and three days. A closer scan of the debris field around Trijam 5 has led to the discovery of an airtight capsule containing an atomic clock that measures time with unparalleled precision. It has a frequency uncertainty so low that it will be another 879 million years before it gains a single second. And it is counting down to a date 42 years and three days away. The capsule holds no clues as to what this date signifies or who the owners are, but it seems as though someone out there has lost track of the time. Tick tock, tick tock. United Nations was given association status. It seems they desire closer relations. Anomaly found. Science division reports a new breakthrough. Wow, everything's hitting at once. Optical sensors isolate a cluster of shapes on the barren sur surface on Trijam 3 that could be buildings. Cool, let's look into that. Uh, get rid of that. Xenobiology, nice. Uh, what do we go from here? I don't know. Hmm. I just realized we're losing a lot of energy credits. What the hell happened? <laughs> Jesus. All right. Um, let's look into genetic health care. That's probably a good idea. Oh, I forgot to actually read the thing. I'll read it in a second. Uh, yeah, that's fine. We'll do that. And then we'll have you go back. Yeah, that'll work. Oh. Oh! They're done. Huh. I honestly didn't expect that so quickly. All right. Um, I guess you go back to the starport and just rest for now. I don't have any other colonized planets for you to assist research on. At least not yet. Why did I never put a balanced focus on this? I'm silly. The Senate has voted on and passed the Resolution Cooperative Research Channels. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Uh, this one was... What was it? We should establish protocols that permit the scientists of the galactic community to share and review discoveries more easily. Yeah, that ain't too bad. I appreciate that. And it was buzzword standardization that had 
enable our enterprises to work seamlessly with one another. Streamlining strategic communications empowers our agents, making hitting key performance metrics easier. That's right. All right. And the next one up, or the next one soon to be up, will be the Pangalactic Recycling Initiatives, and then it will be mine, the Readied Shield. Yeah, that should be fine. That should work just fine. Um, what I was going to look into was the Expansion Planner, and see what planets might be good for possibly working on next. Beham 2 is an Arctic world. That I can colonize, but it also is going to need to be terraformed before I do so. Otherwise, it's not going to be fun for anyone. I do not have enough credits to make that work, though. Huh. Crap. has a dust desert and no other planetary modifier. Alright, so terraforming would be a little more difficult. So, I guess that's out of the question for now. I guess Maradetta is really the only one that is easily accessible. Even though it does have that weak magnetic field modifier. <sighs> Which, if I recall correctly, just eliminates habitability and growth speed. Just a slight, slight bit in the percentages. Otherwise, it'd be okay. Okay, sure. Let's do it. Uh, humans are really adaptive. Holy shit. Uh, but I'm going to send a felon. Um, hmm. Sure. Sure, why not? Name it Camelot. Why not? Works for me. Construction complete. All right. And you're done there, which means you're going back. Cool. Go, 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 Construction go, go. complete. And you're done there. All right. You should probably also make a star base there when you can. I guess it's not yet, but eventually. Oh! I just noticed I'm back up to two influence. Huh. Federation, apparently, being in a federation, overrode all of the other things I had influence-wise going to the Eon Federation. Rather, the Eon Alliance. So, now that we're in a federation, it basically encapsulates all of those things I was already doing. Cool. It's a quick way to do everything I was already doing. And it costs less, overall. Can we do that for the United Nations of Earth soon? <laughs> Could we bring them in? Because I'm spending a lot of influence doing that. Uh, even though it is costing a lot of energy credits on my end of doing that. Can I bring that up any further yet? I can, but not much more. Okay. Alrighty. Hmm. I could do that. Might as well. Sell some of these too. There we go. I'm bringing in a lot of that, so might as well. I'm bringing in a lot of crystals too. Damn. Where did that start? Not that I'm complaining. Ooh. Alien Barracks. The silhouettes discernible from orbit are indeed buildings, and closer inspection reveal them to be of an obvious martial nature. While some, oh, while abandoned for some time, though very recently on a galactic time, st uh, time scale, 
Science officer Mohammed Kaldem believes that secrets of alien tactics may yet be exhumed from beneath the dust that covers the decaying barracks and looted armories. A special project may be issued to study the remains. New sit rep. We'll do it. When credits pass hands, Numa smiles. Show us your wares. Didn't we already do this? I swear we did. Huh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we did, but okay. Yeah, deal. Unless we Science Division get a second a new run anyway. That'd be nice. That'd be cool. Alright. Technology. We have completed this research of space torpedoes. Nice. And where do we go from here is the question. Hmm. Antimatter missiles is the cheapest. Sure, let's do it. Yeah, let's see why not. Uh, let's look at the fleet. Do I need to upgrade it? Yes, I do. A lot System of reconnaissance completed. Jesus. Okay, well they're all done. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Um. Do another trade hub. And then... Yeah. There's one I need to do, but I don't have the tech yet, I guess. Because it was hangers. I could have done that two turns ago. Okay, well, next time. Next time. I will wait on that for now. Whoops. I also have a building I can put in. What should I do with that? Um, well, considering this is the only shipyard, I guess throwing in a fleet academy would be a good idea. Yeah, you know what? For our newly recruited crews to have to be truly combat ready, they must have capable officers leading them. The fleet academy will ensure those officers have up-to-date knowledge on the doctrines and practices of interstellar warfare. It will allow the ship's starting experience to be plus 100, which will get them up to experienced, I think. And then they'll be ready to go from there. Yeah. Cooperative research channels increases the price of it by 5%. So basically, my galactic ambitions lowers it by 20%, and cooperative research channels brings it up by 5%, so I'm basically negative 15% for that. I, I'll, I'll accept that. Yeah, sure. That's fine. I can live with that. Oh yeah, Kerbal. That's right. Um, hmm. That ain't too bad. That ain't too bad at all there. Cool. So that's done. Kerbal. Um, they were going to be a trade hub. But then Kerbal was also there. They'll also need hangers, so I'll have to wait on that too. But... Listening post. Would that help at all, considering I'm in a nebula? I don't think it will. So we'll just throw in a crew quarters. That sounds good to me. Get rid of that. We'll put more anchorages there. That should be good. And throw in a naval logistics office. A minimal but extant bureaucratic layer increases the theoretical capacity of the starbase's anchorages, which is why we should be doing it. And that is another one that I need hangers for that I don't have yet. And... Uh, double check where this is real quick ah cool well, in that case um just put in research silo that'll work 
The Saya Starbase, which is right there. Cool. Uh, Anchorage and Anchorage. And... Naval Logistics Office. Perfect. Riadore, which is up here, I think. Right... There! There it is! Okay. Cool. Um, that is another one I'll need hangers for. We'll deal with that when it comes to it. And... Let's go with resource silos. I don't see why not. And the EM Starbase, which should be down here. Yep, there we are. There's another one that we all need hangers for. And resource silos. There we go. Ha ha! <laughs> Alright. Should stop doing that. Anomaly found. An unusually deliberate geometric configuration of minerals drifts through the debris field debris belt by QHTS-8 and is possibly of alien origin. Let's look into it. I don't see why not. Let's do it. Alright. Okay. Doing fine on the planets. Um, join them Science as the Division last star -based reports upgrade. a new breakthrough. Ooh, what do we got? There it is. Colonization of alien worlds has opened up an entirely new field of biomedical research. Damn right it has. Hey! Xeno diplomacy, which is something I could really use right now. But I could also use stellar expansion and heritage sites. Hmm. Decisions, decisions, decisions. <sighs> But diplomatic weight would be very good right now. Advancing our understanding of interactions with and manipulations of the Xeno is a necessary step in forming more permanent stellar interstellar alliances. Okay, well, still, so far so good. Huh. It would add to my diplomatic weight by 10%. And uh, adding embassies would increase my available envoys. Mm. I absolutely can't see why not. I absolutely cannot see why I shouldn't. So I'm doing it. Construction complete. All right. They are done there. Which means I got to move them to here to do that to get that one marked off <sighs> man oh man oh man uh, actually you know what this one because this one has nine might as well start with that one first the prince Huh. In gentle orbit around the massive QHTS-8 floats a portable data bank. Scooped up by the ISS Renard, it is found to contain text in some alien language. The vocabulary is not wholly unfamiliar, but the syntax is disconcertingly complex. Science officer Muhammad Kadem recommends a more thorough study to decipher the Texts, contents, and origins. Analyze it, unfella. New sit rep. We will see what is up with this new little thing of ours. Finishes in eight months. Well, that's quick. Um, scientist needs to be present on Trijam for that, and you are almost done with your stuff there. So you can finish the research projects, then survey other planets from here. go go around whatever this is oh yeah that's right it's a big space mama fleet ish sort of thing 
and then we'll move you up here and up here we'll see what that goes and uh, maybe we'll cut them off here hopefully we'll be able to do that yeah yeah that shouldn't be too bad um them have them finish up the uh, study of stuff over here actually no never mind I already have someone up there <laughs> never mind it's all good okay how far are they going let's have them finish up here and then call that good yeah that, that'll work that'll work out beautifully Maybe. All right. Well, now Ships we're starting refitted. to map out very well over there. Huh. Do you like alloys? Do you like metals and gases? Hard workers? Precious minerals? Yes, we thought you might. What can you offer us? We have a leader. An excellent fit for the Empire of Eleni. A governor of superb logistics. Very clever. Thinks ahead. Likes long walks on the beach. Give us 150 consumer goods, and the leader is yours. A skill three governor. Not necessarily something I need, but for such a low cost, why not? Certainly, we accept your deal. A pleasure. A joy to deal with the Empire of Felony. We will visit again. System reconnaissance completed. Well, if you keep giving me deals like that, I hope so. All right, Governor. Turk, son of Milv. Age 28. Whoa. The leader is a psychic. Which apparently adds to stability and unity. Interesting. Waste Management Specialist, which decreases building upkeep. That's fine. I like that. Environmental Engineer, which would be good for the new planet we're going to be uh, colonizing. Huh. Sure. Yeah. He's right. Might actually work out well. Uh, oh, resilient guy. When did I pick up Jian Zheng? I don't remember that. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. Oh well. First Imperial Strike Force has been upgraded. Nice. 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 I don't know why that came out of my mouth. But okay. Uh, the Hater system has been dealt with. The Polysimus Syndicate has declared the Sutherian Entity their rival. Well, that one I understand. The Sutherian Entity is a bunch of wackadoodles. So, yeah, I understand that one entirely. I cannot blame them for that. Even though I do not like the Polysimus Syndicate. Fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. Fine. All right. Um. On first. Ooh, yeah, that's right. I can do the administrative park. I do not have the upkeep for it, but having more administrative capacity would be nice. Be very nice indeed. And. Might as well do that. There we go. Good. Good, 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 good. Special project complete. Science officer Muhammad Kadem's thorough Xeno historical analysis of the military installation on Trijam 3 has yielded few tangible results. The base was constructed before the planet turned completely barren, but it is unclear if it's currently if it's current in hospitality. 
I can't pronounce that word for some reason. That is weird. Current in hospitality. I think I managed it that time. Is the result of armed conflict or some more peaceful or even natural process. What can be deduced of their strategies and tactics in armed conflict does not seem to have been far in advance of ours. On the upside, science officer Muhammad Kadem claims to have drawn much inspiration from the alien remnants. Now they have the uh, expertise in military theory trait. Interesting. So, overall, good things. Our pioneers have made planet fall. Good. The Polysimus Syndicate are willing to end the rivalry. This pointless squabble is bad for business, don't you think, Phalens? I do. I do. I've been waiting for you to make that decision this entire time. So now I don't feel too angry at you anymore. I mean, I'm not happy, but I won't say I'm angry. What the what? I don't recognize either of you. Oh! Well, how about that? Well, that's why they didn't go there. And that's why they can't go there. Huh. Progenitors? And the archivists, Quell Nudar archivists, and the Rex Codum, Codium progenitors. The Rex Codium progenitors are fanatic xenophiles and a stagnant ascendancy. This is one of the fallen empires. They are a dormant diplomacy stance. This empire fell into the, a dark age long ago and largely isolates itself from the rest of the galaxy. Which is good, because their diplomatic weight would fucking destroy any chances we had on passing anything in the galactic community. Do they even count as... Oh. Wait, who... Sutherian entity, eat all of... Eat all of my ass. All of my ass. The entirety of my ass. Fuck you. I am not going for that. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. For good measure. Alright. Anywho. Okay. Now that I've gotten that out of the way. Ooh. We're actually getting further along on our cohesion. Nice. Gotta appreciate that. Oh, we get perks. We get perks for each level, too. I didn't know that. That's actually pretty cool. Let me look into this. Level 2 perks, which, I mean, level 1 perk was we're in a galactic union. Level 2, officer exchange. Interoperability and deployability of our combined fleet are greatly enhanced by conducting frequent naval exercises with command rotating between the flag officers of all member states. The amount of members contribute... The amount members contribute towards the Federation naval capacity counts for 25% more, which is nice. Welcoming nature. Regardless of cultural or biological differences, growth of the Federation is to everyone's benefit. Federation modifier. New members impose a 50% smaller cohesion penalty to the Federation. Which is pretty nice. Pretty, pretty, pretty nice. And federal envoys. The better, the better, <laughs> the better future we're striving to build will only work if all beings are aware of what we mean to achieve. We intend to become a pervasive, persuasive force for peace in the galaxy. And it will allow the president to have another available envoy. Wow. Ha ha how. That's crazy. That's crazy wow. Hell yeah. Then level three. 
Level four, level five. Oh my god, there's so many cool things. So many cool things. Oh man. So many cool things going on with that. Well, another abandoned caravaneer ship. Our starbase in the Wanabis system reports that the Racket Industrial Fleet has evacuated and abandoned a decrepited ship, now in unstable orbit, around the system's central star. One man's New trash. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Polysima Syndicate. Oh, yeah, that's right, because I closed... I closed my borders to them. That's fine. That's fine. It's probably for the best for everyone involved. Okay, um, they're done there, which means they get to do that. Wait a minute. That used to be nine. That's annoying. <sighs> well, I guess we'll have them move to that one after all. But that'll be after they're done doing all of that. Um, search abandoned caravaneer ship currently still researching and as a construction ship hmm technically this one's closer isn't it yeah go ahead and do that let me double check how many days it'll take 660 and that'll be good for 3500 so yeah it'll work it'll work just fine Research projects, and then head to the nearest fleet from there. Well, rather, starbase from there. Okay. Speaking of starbases, not done yet. Okay. Well, uh, this is about time where I should be ending the episode, so I'm going to do that. Thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. Click the like button if you like this particular video. And share in comments so we can bring more people into this community. We can talk about the games we're playing together and I'll see you all in the next episode. This has been the one the only Stray Cat playing games and trying to expand the Empire as often as we can and as much as we can. And uh, now we're kind of friendly-ish with the Polisma Syndicate. We have discovered two fallen empires, which is between... Uh, the Themoid Conclave and the Syndicate and the United Nations of Earth and the Syndicate. So, uh, that's a thing. Apparently these guys are going to be nice to everyone. These guys are just kind of meh to everyone. And, uh, these guys now are not happy with us because they changed their policies on how, you know, they enjoy to, uh, run life, I guess, for lack of a better phrase. And otherwise, we're just trotting down the tech and uh, expansion path that is set before us. And eventually, we'll get to a place I feel we'll be proud of. It'll just take a while, as it usually does, for you.